Hello, welcome to another art vlog. In this video, I am working on illustrating a book cover with tempera, a gouache interior sketch, and a new illustration set, designing playing cards. The next book I'm illustrating is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. I will be starting with the cover. I already had a design in mind when I started the sketches. I just wanted to see if it would work in little version before I started it. I knew I wanted Harry in the middle and that I wanted to illustrate the part in the story where he's at the chamber. I just tried to map out the placement of the arms and also if the face was looking at us or if it was looking down. I came up with different designs for the sword. I drew some with lion motifs on it, but I went with the one without a lion. The main thing for the sword is that it has silver and that it has rubies on it. The drawing is done on mixed media paper. I am using a tempera for this painting. I start with adding some blue-green all over the shadows. In the composition, I added some feathers floating around. They are from Dumbledore's Phoenix that comes to help Harry against the Basilisk. And in the back, I will add part of the body of the Basilisk. I made the sword big because in this book, Harry is supposed to be about 12 years old. I wanted him to look small, like a 12 year old kid and making the sword bigger I thought would help convey that. In my mind, when I read the book, Godric Gryffindor's sword is a two-handed sword. In that case, it should look even bigger when a kid is holding it, right? I left the upper part of the paper empty because I am planning on adding the title of the book over there. I will add it in the end using Clip Studio Paint, that way I can move it around and change the position of the letters without damaging the actual painting. Like in the book cover I did for the first book, I left most of the background white, but maybe it was too much. I like the look of leaving all the negative space, but I don't know if it is a good look for a cover. Anyway, I'm already committed to it, so I just need to finish it. The Chamber of Secrets is one of my favorite Harry Potter books. It was actually the first I ever read when I was a kid. I remember as a kid reading the part where everyone is afraid of Harry because he can't talk to snakes and how that's supposed to be a trait linked to Wizards of the Dark Arts. And I remember thinking like, no way, I would love to talk to snakes. I loved snakes. I always wanted one as a pet. I have a lot of good memories from this book, so it makes me very happy to start this set. I just hope that I can do the book justice with my paintings. In this illustration, I really enjoyed painting the body of the snake. It's fun to do the scales by dabbing the color on. I'm also happy with the way Harry's face turned out. Especially because I find it so hard to paint faces of this size. I think simplifying some of the features helped. Here we have the finished version. I will add the text on digital. I am doing a gouache sketch to fill my slithering sketchbook. This is another interior decor in the common room. I am so tired of this gouache and I cannot wait for it to be completely used. It's so watery and so hard to paint with. Even mixing it with each other is hard. I know I am going to use ink to finish this one. It's the only way to salvage it. I'm just trying to cover as much as possible with these terrible paints. I'm trying to just get the main colors for the objects. I don't think I can do much painterly details with this. 
I wanted to paint this interior scene because I really like the tapestry and honestly I just love how beautiful the common room is in the video game. This is from the Hogwarts Legacy game. They all have beautiful common rooms actually. I love how this one is decorated with a lot of dragon motifs. I really wish I could have done a better job on the tapestry with the dragon. It was very frustrating that I couldn't get the paints to work on it properly. I added some coloring with markers too. I'm just trying to fill as much as I can of the spaces left by the paint. And I tried to use the dark markers for some definition on the clock. Once I finished laying the colors with paint and markers, I make the details using ink. It's just the only way I can work with these paints. At first, I was planning on doing the ink only on the clock, so that there would be a clear focal point to the sketch. But I decided to ink everything else. The ink really did help make it look decent. And then I just stick it on the sketchbook. I was actually very mad at this sketch, how it was turning with the paint. I didn't think I was even going to be able to show it on this video. But in the end it turned out okay. I would like to design my own set of playing cards. Who's gonna be the first suit to be drawn? I mean, which suit shall we draw first? Because I will start with the king no matter what. Oh, it will be the king of clovers. Here's this suit for inspiration. I did some sketches in my sketchbook to come up with an outfit design. Then I drew it as a sketch first to test the pose and colors that I wanted. Instead of going with the classic black and red look, I'm going to go with the special four color card suit found in Europe. So the clovers will be the color green. I redrew the sketch on the mixed media paper and I am painting him with my egg tempera paints starting with the brown and reds of his outfit. I'm just establishing the base colors first. I added a lot of plant details to his outfit I wanted him to look regal with all the broderie and to show that he is from the clover suit. Doing all the details did take a bit longer than expected. Also because I painted it mostly through laces. That tends to take a while. But it's one of the things I like about tempera. Once the paint is dry and out of the tube, you can still use it, even as glazes. And I don't like to waste the art supplies, so I'm using every single drop that comes out of these tubes. I 
Eventually I did squeeze some fresh paint so I could cover his fur coat better. While painting his green outfit, I did cover the pattern I came up with. But that's okay, since I have the sketch, I can use it as reference to draw it back on. Okay, so this is what it looks like so far. I think I'm pretty much done, but I was thinking, what if I add gold? If I could actually print them out as cards, I would love it if they would have some gold. So I have my gold paints. These are Zenity watercolors and you can see how they shine. So I was thinking of using the gold or if not, I have actual gold ink by Windsor and Newton. I should probably test them out on a similar paper. Let's start testing out the ink first. Let's test out the watercolor now. Okay, so the Windsor and Newton seems a bit darker and the Cenedi one it's a bit more warm toned. So I think I'm gonna go with the Cenedi one. I just like the warmer tones that it has. So back to our king of clovers. I will add the gold only on the detail. Actually I have green shiny paint. I wonder if I can make his green embroidery look metallic as well. But first I'll do the gold and then we'll see, because it might be too much shininess. I'm just painting over the yellow I used for the details with the metallic watercolor. Okay, here it is. And I think that I will add sparkle on the green because I think it will look good. And since it only shows with the light, might be okay. I'm also adding the metallic green on the clover. I thought it would give it a nice touch. Here we have the final piece. I like how it shines with the light. I don't think something like this would be easy to produce as a card, but at least I have the painting I like. Next time I will shuffle the cards again and we'll see which suit to draw next. Thanks for watching and have a great day.